We were out to find websites on the brink of technology failure and turn them into something awesome. Uh, looking at our purpose statement. <clears throat> so why, uh, why Pat That Go? Uh, we enjoy joining a family in their journey of life at the moment of their move. And the, the purpose, the meaning behind this is that Pack That Go partners um, with the customer to ensure a clear understanding of their needs. You know, the, the moving can be stressful time in their life. So we want to make sure that we can make them comfortable uh, during this time. And then moving happens at a critical or important stage in their, in their journey. And we want to support them uh, in their in their new stage or the new part of their life. So, so in your own words, um, actually we lost the color there a little bit. So I don't know what happened to our color. Uh, okay, so, so give me your feedback on that and what you, how you feel about that and what's the core purpose? Well, I, I think that uh, we summed it up in a very short statement. Uh, that's, pretty uh it's pretty accurate i think it's a uh it's a uh it's a testament to the service i've been trying to provide to people that are every home or apartment or even office building that i've been in just trying to let people know what pack that and go all is all about you know so that starts with me and it you know it trickles down to the rest of the guys that uh that come along with me on this journey so yeah, it, it, it definitely, uh, it, it speaks volumes, you know, just to see different people, you know, all different backgrounds. It, I enjoy doing this, man. So it's, uh, I do it with pleasure. Okay. We enjoy joining with the family at the moment of their moving. Being able to come into someone's home and not only have them feel comfortable with you, but also comfortable with the work or the service and what you're providing. So that's one of the things I pride myself on with, with the birth of Pack That and Go Movers was the ability to be able to communicate with people and, and, and have them trust in me that I'm going to do a job for them in a way in which it's my own job or my own valuable things. So not taking anything for granted, coming to the people's home, having you know, the trust that we're here to do a job and do it, and, and do it well. Uh, that's, that's, that's like a core cool statement for me. So, uh, my experience with Shepherd's Loft, uh, just, it's, it's been, uh, to say the least, uh, a, a great experience with you, David. Um, this has been something I hadn't imagined doing from having Zoom meetings to, uh, Google Hangouts. And, uh, it's been an experience that I, I've really enjoyed. Uh, it's been genuine. It's been, uh, I've been able to really open up and express myself in a way in which, I didn't even know it was possible. Uh, just venturing off on into the business aspect of things, it's, it's new for me. So, uh, you know, you embraced that, you took your time out, and uh, I mean, that's, you know, that, that's priceless. Uh, I mean, I mean that, you know, I appreciate everything from the start to the middle and then just keep things going, you know, toward the future. I, I think the future's bright and uh, I just appreciate everything. This is David Grubb from Shepherd's Loft and HostDivvy.com. And today we are looking at designing a website for a moving company. And Elegant Themes has a moving layout packet that we can look at. And so we're looking at the designs now. Uh, this particular customer is not looking to kind of do a quick quote. He's looking for more something a little more straightforward. So we like the design on the right um, because it does not have the form at the top. Um, the icons are great. Um, we also want to be able to present his services, what he does. Uh, so that's kind of a, a, the area that they serve and it's kind of how it works. So that lay on the right looks a lot more like what we want to do for the home page. And I think at the bottom, so it says satisfaction is guaranteed. Those look like a review section. and those actually look like uh, drop down FAQs. So that looks exactly like the layout that we want to use today. And so we're going to get that added to our WordPress website. Okay, we are ready to start designing our new homepage for Pack That Go. 
Uh, we're at the top in the black bar. We're going to hover over the new, uh, click on new and then new page. We're going to exit out of the Gutenberg editor option here. And then we'll click the purple button that says use Divi Builder. Once we get our layout choices uh, open, we're going to look at the choosing a pre-made layout in the middle. We're going to browse the layouts. Then over in the left, we're going to search for moving. And we looked at the layouts earlier and we want to use the service page and modify it to as our home page. So we're looking for the, the layout labeled services. I believe that's it on the right. Okay, we're going to use this layout by clicking the green button. All right, this gives us a huge jump start on getting this design done. Uh, so the first thing we want to do here at the top is we want to place this our moving services with our Y statement. We have our Google document open in another tab and we're going to go over and copy our Y statement. Uh, we really want just the, the bold part here, joining a family at the moment of their move. So we're going to leave out the little middle part in their journey. So we're just the first sentence, joining a family at the time, at the moment of their move, not all the bullets. Okay. Hovering over the widget area, the module, we can click on the gear and right there in the title, we want to paste that message. And then we want to delete that parentheses there because it makes it a little too long. All right. Underneath, um, if we scroll down, there's, we can access the content area. So we're just going to scroll inside the module and we can see the body area there. We're going to put our bullets inside this body area. So we're going to go back to the Google document and grab that information and just paste those bullets in there. All right. And I think we want to change. I, I really like the color. The yellow is, is pretty close to the color that we want to use. Um, so we want to change, uh, get a free quote to, um, get started and we'll come back later and link that to our, our contact form. So we're done with this little module. We can hit the little green check box there and our first little section is done. Um, it would be nice. Uh, what we may do is just change this to a, a blank template, which means we could change that box icon to the logo. And that would really look nice. So let's go back into the gear and replace that box with the logo. I think we can click on images. There it is there. So we can click the gear and go to our media library. And there's our logo, our PDG Pack Deck Go logo. And then we can click the little green checkbox. That is awesome. Look, I think the colors even match. How did they know? <laughs> so let's, uh, let's hit save draft on the bottom right. And, you know, the, the white bar up there is a little distracting to me. So I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and, and edit our page. So we're going to exit out of our visual builder for a minute here by clicking the ed exit button. And then we're going to go when that's done there, we're going to actually go edit the page and we're going to change our template. So edit page. Okay. At the title, we can put, uh, we can add a title for our page, new home page. Okay. On the right side, we can see our page controls. We are looking for the Divi settings or maybe the Divi at page attributes. Uh, the next one up is page attributes. Uh, okay. So the template says default. So let's click on that drop down menu and change it to blank page. This is really nice because Divi, you know, we can publish this. Divi allows us to have a page without any navigation or header or footer. Um, so we can totally customize this, this homepage. So we're going to publish this and then go visit the page. Okay, we can click view page. It's the little pop-up down on the bottom left in black. Okay, so we accomplished two things there. One is we actually named our page so that when we activate this as the, as the home page in the general settings, uh, we'll know what it's called. And then also we've got rid of that navigation bar at the top and we've got the logo exactly where we want it. We could make it a little bit better, bigger, um, but I think it looks great. Um, we're gonna, we're going to need to go over and get our color selection and make sure that that's right. So we're going to do that next. So we're going to go over on the left side where the little WordPress icon is just to the right, um, just to the right of that underneath the name business. And we're going to go to 
the dashboard. And we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says Divi on the bottom left. And then we're going to go to theme options. All right. So here on the fourth row, you can see the color picker, color pickers default palette. And we want to change the yellow. I always like to change in the closest color to the correct one so they don't get confused later. So let's click on the yellow one and we're going to change this to the actual color of the logo, the yellow and the logo. So this is going to be, and you can put it in all caps, F, F as in Frank, B as in boy, A as in apple, zero, zero. So two Fs, a B, an A, and then a zero, zero. Um, that looks like the right color. So we can just, we can click on the orange that's up there. Oh. Okay, so it saved it. All right, so that orange one, we're not gonna be using that other orange color. So we want to we want to change it to something that's obviously not what we want to use. So click on the orange one, please. Um, we're going to change that to actually let's put in the same uh, the same color code, but then we're going to make a a tone variation. So that's F F B A. And I guess it's a I can't tell if it's a zero or a O, but so two O's. So there it is. So now on the right side, there are two sliders. The inside one, that's correct. We're gonna drag down about halfway. And then we're gonna make sure the one on the right is all the way up. Oh, nope. Well, let's go back to the yellow one. So the slider on the right side, we're gonna make sure that that one's all the way up and it is. Okay, so this is an easy way to get kind of a tone value of the original orange color or yellow color that we were using. Before. So now we have two colors. So let's click on the orange one again. I want to make sure. So did we use zeros or O's there? Okay, let's try O's and see. Sometimes it's hard to tell. And let's just press the enter key. That still looks like it's orange. Okay, <laughs> so I don't know that it, it, it made any difference. So anyway, now we've got our colors um, preset. So as we're designing the the website we can just pick these colors so we've got two variations there we're definitely going to use the black and then we're also going to want a purple um, i see we already have a purple there uh, but specifically we want to use the same purple as uh, lsu uh, for louisiana so we're gonna we're gonna google that right quick on another window okay so the purple that we want to use uh, so let's click on the purple icon and we're going to change that to five zero five zero one seven eight zero five zero one seven eight zero you can push that slider all the way to the top okay so there's our purple so we've set our purple and our our yellow and then we've also got a tone value of the of the yellow this one is a this one is slightly different but that's okay. Um, let's change our our other yellow or orange there. Now nope, we're gonna leave it fine. So that's good. So let's save this page. If you scroll up and click save, there's another place we, since we're getting our presets done, um, you can copy that. Uh, we can copy the purple uh, RGB color or the hexadecimal color. We can copy that to our clipboard and we're gonna use that in our other theme settings. So on the left side, if we click on, on the very bottom, if we click on theme customizer, then we're gonna go to header and navigation, which is the third one down. And then we're gonna look at header format. I think I'm looking for, nope, that's the wrong one. Okay, let's go back. We're looking for the type. Let's go back one more screen. Let's go to general settings, typography. Ah, okay, so if we scroll down here, we can set our primary colors for the website. We want the, we have purple, which we can set as the uh, kind of a background color. So we don't want to set any of those. So if you scroll on down, if we scroll on down, we can, oh, it's at the bottom. Um, usually there's an accent color. So I see there's a link color, um, body text color. So we don't want to set those. So all those look, look fine we can change let's change that body link color to the purple we can paste that there and you can hit we can hit return to make it accept now we're going to go scroll to the top and go back a screen let's go to layout settings there's the theme accent color so we're going to put our yellow 
in here. So that was FFBA00. And we can hit return or click on the color itself. So that's good. Now we can go back. So we've got our theme accent color. Let's go to background. Let's change our background color to black. Okay, so let's publish this and hit click the X to get out. So we've got some of our colors set. Um, actually, I saw one that we, we missed right when we clicked on that is we could set our button color. So let's go back to that theme customizer and get our button color set. Okay, so buttons and button style. Okay, so the background color, the second one there is we want to set to the gold color. Oh, good. So we have our colors that we preset is now available. We're going to set it to the um, the one on the right, the orange, the more orange looking yellow. And then we have to move the slider on the far right to change the opacity back to full. There we go. And we can see our sample over on the right side of the page. Um, so now we're going to change our text color. We're just going to make it black. Uh, no opacity, so that's good. Um, the, the borders, the radius looks good. Well, it's set to 3. Border width, border width is 2, which is a little thick. Um, but I think that's fine. And so this looks good. We can publish this and exit out. All right, now we can go back to the our page. So if we go to pages, or actually before we do that, we can make this easier on ourselves. Let's scroll down and go to settings over on the left column and go to, so go up to settings, up, down, <laughs> just above Divi. Uh, there's the reporter plugin and then the settings. And there we can click on reading over on the left and your home page displays. And then there's a drop down menu next to home page. And we want to change that to new home page. All right. And then we can scroll down and click the blue button. Save changes. Fantastic. Okay. Now when we go up to, but we're not going to go there yet. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and go to our um, general page and change the title of our website. Um, so this is no longer a business. We're going to change that to pack that and go. And then we're just going to delete the tagline for now. And then we can scroll down and click the blue button to save changes. So when we change the title of the site, we can see up in the, the, the tab, there's a title that shows up there. And that's the that's what's going to show up in the little tab at the top. And you can also see where the little house is on the top left in the black bar that the title of the website is packed at and go now. So we're going to go hover over the title in the little black bar and click on visit site. And now that we have the home page set correctly, now we can see the design that we started. We've got our, you know, basic color set up and so we're really ready to rock and roll okay we've got our first part together which is the white team we're going to scroll down and we're going to start working on the the what which is the services that he offers um, this section is a little different so we might want to insert so if we go back to our google document uh, yes we need to enable our visual builder and then we can find our content okay so in our google document we're going to look at the next section of content that we need. Um, so we've got a little paragraph here of the services he provides. Uh, and then I think below that is what is below the what section here. Just trying to look ahead, our moving process, moving services. We're just trying to look and make a strategy on which content is going to fit in the best area. Moving services uh, include packing, moving pods and storage and assembly. So we have four products there. So if we go back and look at our design uh, and scroll down, we've got these call outs, which are types of services, which is great. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit more and see what else we have here. Here, here is four options, uh, which is great. There's packing and unpacking. It's even actually already kind of labeled the way we want it. So we want to put those items in this section um, because it because it really lines up so we're going to jump ahead so in our google document we're going to copy our first little so we're going to do the moving services which will be the title of that section so we want to add that subtitle there 
So we're gonna copy that and go back to our design. And actually, so we're gonna add a, a title on top. So inside this column, we're gonna add another, well actually we're gonna add another, just add another row between these two sections. So you can click the plus up there. Yes, perfect. And we're gonna use a full width and then we're going to use a text module. And we're going to replace all that content with our clipboard. Okay. We're going to go back to the visual mode uh, in that module. And we can highlight that text. And then we can use our paragraph styles. We're going to change to an H2. And we want to center. And that's good. We're going to get, click the check mark here. We're going to come back. And we can come back and actually in the theme customizer, we can change the size of the fonts for our headings and things there. So instead of trying to change them individually, we're gonna to try to change them all at once. Um, okay, so on where it says international moves, that's where we wanna put our first little um, type of service. So back to our Google document, we're gonna grab, the first one is moving. So that will be the title of our first one. And we're gonna click the gear so we can open up that content. And then we'll paste our description in the body area that we're gonna get from the Google doc. Good, we got our first one done. Now we're going to work on doing the other three. All right. Well, our um, that looks really good, except our icons are a little different. So our assembly icon is not correct. So we're going to see if we can pick a different icon for that one at least. And see, yep, yeah, we we'll go to image icon. And we should have some in the media library provided by Elegant Themes. So we don't have a great icon to use for assembly. However, do we have a good photo? So, well, actually the... The one on the next row down with the purple shirt, he's assembling a bed right there. So yeah, let's lose, use that one. And so if we're going to make this one a picture, let's let's go ahead and see if we can change the other ones to photos as well. And we want to take away the link. So uh, scroll down and let's open up the link section and let's delete. Um, I don't see it. There's not a link there. So is the button... Is the button read more button a separate module? So let, we're gonna accept that, close that module. Okay, so we're just gonna delete these read more because there is no more. read more. There's, I mean, that's it, that's all the information. So we can delete all the read more buttons and then we're gonna change our since we've got some photos, uh, pods and storage. Let's replace that with an actual image. Let's use the one over on the left. Uh, far left that one's that's packing. Okay, so that one's storage. Yes packing is going to be the one with all the stuff Wrapped all right, and we just got one more for moving we could do um, Oh, we can do the the front door with the guy with the, with the purple shirt on. You know, let's just do that one. He's not moving anything, but um, Actually, no better yet. Let's do the I think the TV down there is a good one uh, so two, it's in the middle, one, two, three, fourth column, third row. There we go. Perfect. All right, we got all our moving services in. So we're going to go back to our Google Doc. Um, so we can highlight those. All of that section is yellow as being completed. So let's scroll back up. Um, okay, so let's. we're going to take that first paragraph, we provide moving services, we're going to take those two sentences and just add them as a separate text module to the top, and then we've got one, two, three, four, five, we've got five bullets that we can add underneath, so we're going to scroll up, and I guess we'll add, need to add a new row that goes in the white, so I guess you'll have to sc scroll down a little bit, and let's add a new row, I'm going to use the text module, okay. And we want to change the font size on this. We'll go to the design and go to text. And we can scroll down and change the font size to maybe 18. Okay, that looks great. Okay, for the section above, we've got five bullets, but this has only got three rows. So what we want to do is in the green box, we want to click on the fourth icon, which is the column, and change it to five columns, which is, there we go second row, second column. So now we've got five of these. Oh, we don't need any of the read more buttons. We can delete all those. And then we can actually duplicate um, two of these that we have here by clicking the third icon, which is the, the duplicate module. And then we can use the arrow, the first icon to drag it over to the other column. And then, oh, we accidentally created a sixth column. That's okay, we'll go ahead and duplicate the other one and get our 
other one made. So we're going to duplicate this one again, drag that one over. Now we can go back to the column section, the green tab column and change it back to five. We go. Okay. So in the Google document, we're going to replace the little titles and text on all of these. Yes. Each bullet is going to be a separate one. Um, yes. So we're going to get rid of the titles in these. This is looking great. Um, the first section, we've got two sentences there, which is kind of a lot longer than the other ones. So I think what we need to do is, is delete one of those. Let's delete the first part that says we move the furniture and belongings our own. We'll just delete that first one. That'll shorten it up. That way our space is kind of even. So that's good. And then we want to change the last two icons to something else. We have, uh, let's just, let's just pick the airplane, put it in there just for now and then change the last one. Oh, it's a different size. I don't know if we can use the red one or the buggy. Oh, hold on a second. Click on, let's click on the, click on one of the other ones and look at the size. 240. Okay. Click on the red one. Okay. So we were looking for another one that's 240. How about the box? Is the box 240? So that one's 120. Do we have five of them? We don't have five of them that are alike. Okay. So let's just put the, uh, the box in there for now. So we may have to resize some of these so that we can get them the same size across the board. Um, actually some different icons might be better. It says we love to be on time. A watch would work great. Great. We love to communicate. That could be a cell phone. So do we have an icon option? Let's see what module we're using. I'm going to scroll down image icon. So let's use icon. We're going to turn that on. Uh, let's see. I forgot which one of this is. So maybe if we moved it to the side, we can see we love to be on time. So a, a clock some sort. Okay. And then let's change the last one to a phone. All right. So committed to your journey, the time we arrive, current location. So location, we can get us a little bubble or balloon, they call them or a map icon. Oh, the two, two, one, two icons over is the little balloon. Sometimes these things are hard to see. All right. Okay. So we pack your contents with care. So a box and then every piece from the first to the last is handled with care. So uh, if we can find some a pair of a hands or a thumbs up or there we go. Perfect. And okay. So we're going to put this text underneath and I can see that it's, it's still too small. So we're going to put that whole row. We're going to drag it on top. And then we also need to add a, add our title for this particular content. So we're going to add another widget here uh, in that top row. Yes. And add another text widget there to put in our subtitle. And if we go back to the Google document, we can verify which, what title we wanted there. Oh, uh, this is the what section. So this is, um, what we do is we can put, we can just type in what we do for this. We help you move. How about that? Using the visual tab, we can go over and highlight our text and change this to an H2. Then we're going to center it and put it on top. So let's make our text a little bit bigger and also span it out a little wider. So we're going to go to design and let's go to 22. So to make this a uh, really easy to read because it's stretching so far across the page, we don't want too many words on one line. And then we also want to adjust the line height for the text. So if we're doing a 22 uh, size text, then we probably want to go 25 or 26 on the line height which would be pixels and not. Okay. That's looking good. All right. So we can go back to our Google document and check that off. We've got all of our what information entered. So that's completed. All right. We're scrolling down and in between we had our moving process, which, which actually we can put it underneath the moving services. So this is the next section that we want to work on is our moving process. So we're going to copy that title so that we can add that in and check our layout to see if we've got kind of a section we can already use for that particular thing. Um, so let's keep on scrolling down. Okay. So that's the service area. So let's scroll on down. What's below that, uh, how it works. Okay. We're going to need that. So we need, we need to actually create a new section because there's not one here available for us other than we have this big image section, which we're not going to use. Uh, so this is the one section we're not going to use. Um, that we can convert over. So we're going to get rid of the red form. Actually, um, we're not going to delete it. We're going to change the color to purple, and then we're going to put our 
our process information inside that box. So we're going to click the gear on the widget on the module. We're going to delete all the form information because we're not building a form here. Oh, I see the whole module is a contact form. Okay, so we can exit out of that and just delete the whole module because it's not the module that we want. So we're going to trash that one. And then we're going to add a new module that's just going to be a text box. And then we're just going to put all of our content right into this little text box. And we're going to, we may have to renumber them. So we're going to just going to copy them all and then we can renumber them. We go over to the, the visual now. Um, we may be able to highlight those and then usually we don't have a number. So we'll have to manually type in a number because actually we do. We have an order list. So if we highlight them first, um, put our title on a separate line okay. then we can highlight all of our our process and then we can scroll up and click on our ordered list which is in that top row paragraph bold italist unloaded okay so we'll have to click just to the left of the pack and hit the delete button and then return and that should order it for us okay so let's bold those that those first items like move in we're gonna bold those so they'll stand out uh, the key commands actually work we can we're on the Mac we can hold the command key if you're on a PC you can hold the control key and uh, click your B button for bold and a lot of times when you've got a single word you can double click on the word and it highlights all word but if you've got a hyphenated word then you have to click and drag to select so we've got one more uh, move okay we got it all right, so we're going to go to this top. We're going to highlight our our moving services, and we're going to make that an H2. Uh, we could come back and break out these steps into H3s, um, and that might be helpful for our SEO. But for right now, this looks good. We're going to go to design, and instead of changing the font color to white, we're going to type in light, L-I-G-H-T, as in light and dark, and we're going to change this text module from being a uh, using a dark text to using a light text. So it's right there in the drop down menu. And that way, it's really simple. If we want to come back, it doesn't add the extra code of having the text being white. Um, and if we wanted to change it back to dark, if we moved it to a light background, then we could just change it to dark and it would retain its original color. So that's a neat little step. So let's get rid of that red and let's change it to purple. So we're going to save this box by clicking the green checkbox. And then for the green tab, we're going to go to the settings on the green tab. And then we're going to choose, uh, we're going to scroll to the bottom for our background. And it looks like it's not set here. So it's probably set in the background of the column. So we'll scroll back to the top and open up the gear of the first column. And yes, that's where they set the red color. We're going to choose our purple, which is the same as LSU. That's really purple. So that looks awesome. So we're going to hit the green checkbox. We're done here. And now we've we've reused this section that wasn't that we we're not going to use. We've used it for something that they did not include in the layout, which is our moving process. We can click the green checkbox again. And we've got the bulk of our content done so far. So now we're ready to do... Um, the other content at the bottom, if we scroll down, we're ready to put in our service areas. And this is going to be a really big um, section for us because he services a lot of areas, a lot of towns and parishes. So we're going to take a quick break here, and then we're going to come back and work on this. Okay, now we're ready to start on the service area for the moving company. And what we're going to do is we're going to use um, to kind of uh, unfold some of the content or to keep the design clean because we love the way these boxes are uh, we're going to add some accordions inside the columns to be able to give the users a different additional information so the first thing is we want to kind of style this box these uh, columns the way we want them first so let's make sure our colors are correct we're going to hover over the um there. okay so maybe sometimes you got to click on way over on the left somewhere to get the little tabs to come up so we're gonna on the green tab we're gonna click the gear and we're gonna make sure that our colors are set so in the first column we're gonna make sure that that's a, a true dark black uh, by clicking on the black one in the in the menu and we can see that it changed a shade uh, so we're gonna accept that one little green checkbox and then we're going to go to the next 
column. I think we got to scroll up and click on the middle column. And we're going to change this one to purple to match our our colors. And we're going to accept that one. And then the last one, we're going to make our make sure that it's our our gold or gold color. Okay. And then we also need to check our icons and make sure that they're the correct color as well. Uh, so we'll probably have to go to the design tab and make sure that that one's set to, it could be a separate module. Yes. So we're in the columns, so it's going to be in the module. So we're going to save this and then we're going to go to each module. So we're going to save it again. Then we're going to go to the module and we're going to choose the, the black that's in our palette and make sure it's set to the darkest one. Okay. And then we're going to make sure this one is gold. Alrighty, so we're ready to put in our first city over here on the left. We're going to replace San Francisco with uh, a city that he services. So we're in our Google Doc. Uh, our first one is Keener. Uh, and we're not going to, we don't need to include the city there. Um, so we can just type it in if it's, so we're going to open up this module. And just type in Keener into the title. And we're going to delete all the other content. Save that. And now we're going to create an accordion module to go underneath. And we're going to change our background to black and our text to white. So I think on the, I think we got to go to the content, scroll to the bottom to change our background color to black. And then in the design, we want to go to light. Okay. Well, okay, so the accordion doesn't have the option to make this text white. So we'll have to manually change it. So we'll clear our filter and go to our, I think we got to go to our design module, our tab rather. Click on body text and scroll down and, and change that to white. Um, we're also going to have to change our title. So if we scroll back up to title text and change that to white as well. There we go. Now we can go back to our content and the first tab is going to be the general information and this is going to be left, left open. So we can just put info and we can, so that, Finishes that module, so we can save that one. Then we're going to open up the the first accordion tab below it, and our title. This will be the nearby cities. So then we just got to go to our design module and change our title text and body text to white. And I think we got to go to the content, back to the content, and change it to black background. Uh, once we get a couple of these done, then we will be able to copy the. Uh, the styles from one accordion to the next. So we're going to save this with a click in the green checkbox and scroll up. Now we can add a new one. We can duplicate the one we have actually uh, over on the left and then replace it with the next bit of information. We're going to do the next city, uh, Covington. So we're going to click the save that out and then open up the gear on that one. Uh, save us uh, ourselves a little bit of time. We can duplicate the accordion module that's in the first column and we can duplicate it and drag the copy the extra copy over to the middle one middle column oh but this one's purple that kind of looks kind of looks nice with the black on the purple but we're going to change it to purple so if we scroll up to the top i believe we can extend the styles for this module so over on the right on the right side of the trash can there's a triple dot on the right side and we should be able to extend item styles um, and we want to do it for only this and that makes the other ones purple so there's one more step completed so then we just got to swap out the the body content so for the section on the yellow it's the white text is really hard to read so we want to be we want to change that to black instead of white so i think we want to go to title text um yeah i don't think we have a light and dark oh yeah we do there we go we can change that to dark Yes, and then we're going to delete the extra content. Scroll to the bottom to change the background color to... No, we got to change... No, we have to change the, the first accordion module. That's what we got to change. I think we're also going to have to change all the text to black so we can make sure that it's readable. So we'll go to the design section, and then we'll go to title text. All right, now that we've completed the first three, um, looks like our copy on the, on the one on the third column was a little bit longer than the other one, so we can... We can come back and adjust that uh, later, but so what we're going to do now is going to duplicate this entire row of content. So we're going to go to the green and we're going to hit the, the third icon, duplicate. I'm going to duplicate this row and then we're going to scroll down and we are going to do the next three cities um, that he, that he um, provides moving services for. Let's go ahead and click save, save our progress there, and then we can continue to add 
uh, the cities. Yeah, so so this is more. It's not a city. West Bank is not a city. It's actually an area that's that's west. So yeah, let's put in the full title. All right, our next section is uh, really the sales process that that communicates to the customer what what they need to do in order to engage services with our with uh, the moving company. So our black uh, parts there that says fill out our form. Those will be our titles. And then we'll put our little um, description underneath. So how it works. Um, we can delete the, we can leave it how it works. We, that's that's perfectly fine. We'll just delete the Greek text underneath it, but not the title. Yeah, just leave those. Alrighty. So uh, this first section, so we want to find the text module. Oh, it looks like it's got a little line. So this will be interesting. We may have, sometimes you got to change the padding. So we might want to change the padding on the row so that we can access our module. Or we could use our little icons on the far left of the screen on the bottom. Bottom left, we could switch it to grid mode, wireframe view, sorry. Uh, let's see, so that says footer. So let's scroll up a little bit. Oh, that says accordion. So let's keep scrolling up. Testimonials, testimonials. Okay, so it's nice of them to label this for us. There's how it works. Um, so we want to come down to the flir first blurb um, on that second row. One more row down. Click the gear on that blurb. And we can access the content here. So our first step in the sales process was to fill out the form. And we have a little description there for them. It's quick and easy. And then we can edit our second blurb and then the third one after. Uh, once we're done with the wireframe, we can go back, click on the desktop icon, which is the fourth icon there. And that'll put us back into visual mode. And we can scroll down and see, there it is. Fill out our form, talk to a representative and make a deposit. Um, so we're going to change the that button and we want to change that to just get started so we can click the little gear or how about let's change it to let's move i think there's apostrophe after that's inspiring all right so we're going to scroll on down to our next session section which is our testimonials well, we can leave the title as is so let's just copy our first uh, quote there and we've only got two at the moment so we'll have to uh, we'll have to delete one of these modules maybe on the right side, we'll just delete the little uh, regular modules there. And then we can change it to two column. So on the green tab, we'll click the columns icon, switch it to two. Doesn't look too bad. So now we can just uh, open up the module and replace the text. Since we don't have a person's name on the first one, we can leave it off on the second one. That's excellent. And we can delete the Greek text under satisfaction guaranteed. Alrighty, we're ready to move on to our frequently asked questions. Um, I would like for there to be a title here. So let's go up to the previous section where it says satisfaction guaranteed. And let's duplicate that module and then drag it down to the section below. We might, okay, that's fine. Let's put it at the top just anywhere. And we'll have to create a new row to put it in by itself. Um, so on the... We can do it from the section above. We can click new row and then drag it down into the next section. And then we can change our text to moving questions or questions about moving. You can do it in the visual mode so that we don't lose our H2 tag there. It's okay. We can delete the whole thing and just put moving question or questions about moving or moving questions. I don't know what sounds better. Let's make this an H3. I think we have to highlight it first. Oh, now we got it. Okay, good. Uh, questions about moving. Okay, that's good. It's uh, We'll have to get the style from one of the other ones, so that's good for now. And uh, now we can put in our FAQs and probably change our red to purple. We'll go to our title text. We want to change this. Um, the above one is an H3, so we want to click on the H4 um, so that our hierarchy is correct. And then we want to change the color to our purple there we go and we might could bump up the size a little bit so we can scroll down just increase our text size a little bit actually it looks good all right we can save that one and then we can copy that style to the other ones or extend i rather um, probably this whole section so i'm not sure how many faqs we have so we're going to alternate between 
the first row and the second row till we run out. All right, finishing up the FAQs. So the next section here, so we want to make sure we have a good call to action. We don't want them to fill out a form. Uh, so what we're going to do is we'll change the email us. We'll just delete that module. And really we want to, you can just we can just delete the whole module. And then we want to create uh, a call to action there, which is to get in touch with us. So we're just going to add a little text module here at the bottom for the call to action. And we've added some text into our Google document. So we'll go over to visual and we can make that uh, maybe an H4. And then we want to change it to light. All right. So let's, um, okay, that's good. So let's add another mod. Actually, we want to go up and make a duplicate copy of the Let's Move button, and then we can just drag it down below that. So let's make that uh, text for the H4 bigger. Oh, actually, before we do that, let's go out and find out what size, font size the other ones are so we can match them up. So we're going to scroll up, and we're going to keep going to this one here, the Satisfaction Guaranteed. So let's open that module and see what our styles are. We're going to go to Design. I think that's an H2 already. So heading text, I'm going to click on H2. We can see that that's using the the Oswald, and it's a size medium, Oswald medium. And let's keep scrolling down. It's a size 46, Oswald medium 46. Okay, let's save that. We're going to leave this as is for now. So we're going to save and exit. Um, our visual builder and once we exit out of the visual builder we're gonna go to the theme customizer and we're gonna set Oswald as our default font so that we can use the theme customizer instead of modifying every little module so we're gonna go we're gonna hover over pack that go and go down to theme customizer uh, now we can if we if you miss the button you can scroll down all the way to the bottom and right it should be right there on the Divi, so we got to go all the way to, about to the bottom, Divi, and then the third option, Theme Customizer. But you can get there either way. Okay, under heading, Header and Navigation, we want to go in there, and we want to go to Header Format. No, that's not where we want to go. This is always tricky. I always go to the wrong place. Let's go, let's go back out. It's not under Header. Uh, it should be under, let's check the general settings, but I think we were there earlier today. Uh, let's check the layout settings and see if it has, so we've got our accent color there, so that's not it. We go back, um, check our topography, which I know we were there before. There's our header font style right there. So um, we don't want to change the style, but we want to change the font. So under header font, we want to check the the Oswald, was it? So, unfortunately, you cannot use the keyboard unless they updated it um, to jump to the O, so you just have to scroll and scroll until you get there. There's Oswald. And um, I believe they we were using a medium size, so we can, under body, but that's body font. Um, so I don't see a medium option unless they unless it's a separate font so let's click on Oswald again and see I th that's the only Oswald that's there okay so we're just gonna stick with that we're not gonna make it bold because Google frowns on it so we're just gonna leave it as is and you can see over on the right at the bottom of the screen it says we help you move 
that text changed when we set our header font. Um, and that's exactly what we want. We want to be able to control and, and change all of the header fonts on the page through the customizer instead of having to do them individually. So we're going to look back up at the header fonts, header text size, uh, which is the third one down there. It says 30 now. We want to change that to 46, um, just like the, the design sample provided us. Oh, and look, so now on the right is the right font size. And if we scroll on down the page, uh, we can see that the other ones that we already made, the moving services and our moving process, all of these have been updated. Um, that one was already there. We actually need to change it back to default. Um, so now all of our font sizes are updated. So let's keep scrolling all the way down the page and double check those. Okay, new, all the cities look great. How it works looks great. Those look good. Satisfaction. Questions about moving. So that one got updated. All the other um, questions, those got updated. Those look great. And the bot, even the footer one got updated. So we just updated like maybe 8 or 10 or maybe even like 20 modules. Okay, so unfortunately it changed our, our purple to back to red. So let's look over on the left column there and see we got the font i don't see there's a header text color there at the very bottom yes let's change them all to purple that's so exciting uh there it is there's our pre-saved purple and it didn't work but it didn't work because we changed them locally now it's going to change all the other ones on the page which is perfectly go okay we want a little more purple on our page um, so those look good. So we're going to publish this and exit out. If we want the red ones to change, we're probably going to have to change those locally because I think we kind of hard, hard, you know, hard coded those, or we changed them uh, locally instead of globally. All right, so we can hit the X to get out of there, and that pretty much wraps up our homepage. Other than the footer section, that's not a big deal. We want to move on quickly to our forms. So over in the left left column. We're using gravity forms, so we're going to click on forms, right? And we're going to dismiss that little notice there that gets in our way. Um, and you can see we've got this turned off. So the first thing we want to do is click the slider to activate this form. And then we're going to click the edit button. And in the Google Doc, we have some specific questions that we want to ask. So name, email, and phone, those are all appropriate. We're going to keep those, but we're going to add some specific questions um, that are going to help us understand who our who our customer uh, is going to be. So in the Google Doc, we're going to grab our first question um, beyond the standard contact information. And so this is going to be a radio button uh, question. So over on the right side, yes, we're going to click radio button. And then we're going to drag that up above the message so that it's right underneath the phone. And we're going to click on the blue bar there. And then we can change the field label to the question. And then for the choices, we can, we're just going to do, okay, good and great. We really want to get a feel for uh, the customer's mood. Um, that may give us some insight on what kind of person they are. And uh, let's, uh, if we're capitalizing, let's capitalize the okay as well. Okay, so we can click the blue bar again to close that one up. Uh, and our next question is, where are you moving to? This is going to be a drop-down menu. So we'll grab, we can click that on the right and drag it into position right above the message. So on the label field, we can paste in our question. And so we want to really make this easy for the customer. So we're actually going to put in all the cities that we listed. We know that we had nine of them because it was in a grid, three by three. Um, so we may have to go up to our section above and copy our cities. The first one is Keener. Our second one is Covington. The third one is Metairie. And then the next one is Slidell. Hit the plus button to add another field. The next one is Mandyville. I know all the folks in Louisiana right now are making fun of my southern accent and pronunciation of these cities. So I apologize. The next one is Pearl River. And the following is Baton Rouge, then New Orleans, 
And then finally, and we're just going to call this one West Bank Area. All right, we're going to scroll down a little bit more, and we should see an option to enable. Usually, there's an enable other option there somewhere. Um, okay, so I don't see it. Maybe it's only available on the other one, not this one. So that's okay. So let's click the update button on the right. Okay, and we want to duplicate this one, except, but then we're going to change it to, actually, we missed one field. So let's open that one back up. Click on the blue title for the where you're moving to. And we've got to add one more field, which is going to be pods and storage. All right. So let's, uh, we can click on the blue bar to close that one up. And then we, then there's a duplicate button between the little arrow and the X right there in the middle. We can duplicate this one. And then we are going to change the question, where are you moving from? And then that one's good. Okay. So then we can close that one up. Now we just need a date and time so we'll add two separate fields one for the date we can put it on top of the message or all right and uh, that was easy enough now how big is your move so we, that'll be a um, checkbox a checklist so it might be in our standard fields checkboxes so we're going to start with um, a garage and then office dining room so we're going to we're going to save that and one more question do you need help with packing so that'll be a yes or no question, which should be a radio, radio button. Top. Okay, and then just, do you need help with packing? And that's a yes or no. All right, we can delete the third choice and we can update our form. Now we've completed our form, it needs a little styling, then we're gonna add it to our contact page. Um, so we'll continue that in just a moment. Finish up our form, we are going to do a little bit of styling. Uh, we can put these uh, fields into two columns so that it looks great uh, on the page itself. So we're gonna work on that next. Under appearance, uh, there are some custom CSS classes and we can use those preset classes to style our form. So every other one I'm going to change to right. Okay, it looks like I got the wrong one here though. This will be the left. And then where you're moving from underneath it will be the one that's going to show up on the right. Okay, now that we've finished our form, we're going to build a new contact page and add this form to it. Uh, we realize our ID is one, so if we need to put that in to the code, we can. So we're going to look up the moving layout, and then we're going to use the contact layout for this page. Swap out our form, and then edit the rest of our content. We don't have a, a button form, but we can just Google that real quickly. And we can copy this short code here, although it looks like a lot more than what we need. It doesn't matter whether or not we put the, so we don't need the fill values. Tab index is fine. We don't want the description of the title. Um, we do want ID one, so that is correct. And it doesn't matter whether we put it in the visual or the text mode. Short code works either in either place. Now our form is is two columns, so it's kind of crammed over here on the side. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and save our draft, but we want to change our our row here to be more of a two thirds, one third. We'll click on the column layout, select our two third, one third. That should give our form more more space. Let's go a little bit further. Let's go to a kind of a three fourths. We're not going to have the phone number over on the right side, so we can remove that. Just looks like we need some spacing over on the left side here. We're not going to need the map at the bottom, so we can remove that. Looks like there's some space, you know, right here for the locations and some more of our FAQs. 
So what we can do is we can we can leverage that information and add it to this page. But I think think I think it kind of clutters what we're trying to do here. We want to keep this simple. Um, it would be nice if we add some additional FAQs to put here. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to remove these other sections because we have all this information on the home page. We're just going to remove all of that. We don't need the additional form either. And now we've got our page simplified. Uh, we could add our mission statement here. And I want to change the title from contact to let's move to match the buttons on the home page. And we'll go back and grab our mission statement. We'll go back and grab our mission statement from the Google Doc. Okay, we're going to publish that. Exit our visual builder. Okay, there's our page. We can update our styling or may want to pull our background up behind this form and update and change the our button. So we've got a few more little things to do and then this will be looking great. And we also want to copy this link uh, to go back and program the home page. So we're going to make some final adjustments on our contact page. We're going to change out this icon at the top and put in the in the logo. Dragging down the widget, uh, adding some spacing so that all our fields are over the, the white area there. Got uh, room around the edges so everything's visible now. Uh, and we got our logo swapped out, so this is looking really good. Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll change this to a blank template as well so that uh, we, don't, we don't need the navigation at the top because we've only got the two pages. So, but this looks good from here. We can make all the other changes um, from another page. We're going to click Save and exit the Visual Builder. I'm going to go ahead and copy my link back to my clipboard. And then we're going to edit this page directly uh, through the WordPress dashboard so that we can change our template. So under Document on the right side, we're going to scroll down. Page Attributes, we're going to change that to Blank Page. Click Update. There we go. Now it looks very neat and clean. Uh, we could link the logo back to the home page. So that would be useful. We're just going to correct some little small mistakes and update our buttons and uh, just kind of tidy up the home page now. The logo is a little small. We've got a larger size that we've uploaded so we're going to replace that with one that's a little bit bigger. Uh, here's our button text. We're going to change that to let's move and then make sure it's linked to our form. So we're just going to check our other settings as we scroll down the page here. Make sure this button is linked. So I think what we're going to do here is we'll change this background to purple. And then we're going to put this text from the right side over here on the left. Um, because we're not, going to, we're not going to need any of this information. Uh, he doesn't have a storefront. There's no need to call. They need to fill out the form. So we're just going to remove all of this change this back to a single column and we should be able to drag and drop these over here where we want them. Now we just need to change our background color to purple. All right so now we just need our social links down there and these are all looks like all these are purple. So this is looking good. Now that we've got the uh, most of the page, well, I've got a few little text edits. We're going to do those, and then we're going to look at what the uh, mobile view is, and we can make any adjustments there. All right, the mobile looks good. So we're going to save this. And we updated our buttons. We made some text changes. Um, so really, I think we have everything uh, completed. Um, so this website is looking pretty finished. Um, I think there's some social media icons that we wanted to add. Uh, but I don't believe we have those available at the moment. So we'll have to come back and add those later. But other than that, uh, everything, uh, all the design, all the content has been added to the website. Everything is completed. 
Uh, we probably just need to make sure that our form works. We can test that. Uh, we've already checked the mobile and that looks good. So we've completed the Pack That Go website design and this is our recap of our project. Uh, we changed out the photo in the background on the home page here. You can see the yellow shirts, uh, his company shirts. Uh, matches these yellow on the logo really makes the design come together when we add that photography um, you know with the with the colors match up with the design of the site so that was a really good final uh, tweak that we made you know this section here we help you move kind of bullet list some of the some of the beliefs that he has for his business uh, some of the services that he has uh, here's the list of the services, which is you know assembly, packing, storage, and moving. Uh, we changed a couple of these photos out as well. Uh, we can see we've got a, a better assembly photo, at least having the front front view of the person there that's that's doing that activity. Scrolling all down, the moving service here. This is our process. I think that's a really good step by step. So that's all in there and completed, matching the colors. The service area for Louisiana, this is really awesome section. Really excited about the way this came out because you know there's so much information here, the nearby cities, the landmarks. This is very useful information uh, both to the visitor and to the search engines. There were nine sections of these. Uh, it, the content animates in, so that was really good. Love the animation on how to request the moving services. So this is really good. We've got the form, the talk, and deposit. You know, we're really communicating to the customer how, you know, what their process is going to be like. Along with the call to action there, let's move. Uh, and then the guarantee, we got a couple of testimonials in there. Uh, we finally got these um, colors for these FAQs. We got those uh, colors for the headings changed so it all matches to purple now. And we even added, I know it's a Google Plus, but they don't make a, an icon that's for the Google My Business so I've just been using this Google Plus symbol till I can till I can find a way to replace that. So we've added uh, a couple more links. Make sure those linked up to the social media. Then, so once you move, it takes you to the contact form here, and you can see the form here is below. We got name, email. You know, we added in this question: How excited about this move are you? So we really want to kind of get a feel for what kind of you know what the mood is of the customer so that he, he can judge you know what kind of person then they are so uh, that's it that's the complete tour of the pack that go website uh, it was a lot of fun uh, getting to know Jamar and designing and building his website for him you know we intend to follow up with Jamar and help him market his website moving forward and we will have a update on that soon so please like comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, this is super exciting. We'd love to get your feedback. And if there's some other uh, Divi layouts uh, that you'd like to see us use or other type of tutorials that you'd like to see, just leave them in the comments below and we'll do our best to fulfill those for you. So thanks again. Have a great day. We were out to find websites on the brink of technology failure and turn them into something awesome.